I'm John Biggs. We are here at South by Southwest. I'm here with Olivier Bao. You're a researcher for Disney Research. And yesterday you did a panel on wearable computing, uh, essentially how electronics can give you superpowers. Is that right? Yeah. That's, that's right. So tell us a little bit about what your panel, what you were working on at the panel. So um, I think there's like a new trend in wearable computing where basically you don't have like to strap devices around you anymore or like camera, head mounted cameras or things like that. But um, it becomes like, uh, it comes down to like wearing like a single device that basically uh, use the uh, electrical capabilities of your, your body, right? Because our body is like run by electricity and like a sensitive to electricity. And so by basically injecting signals and sensing signals who go through our body, we can actually modify what we perceive, how we act, and, uh, and basically con also control and interact with uh, computer devices. So obviously we all have these kind of like basis wristbands and everything now, but how is this different from that and what can you change about your senses or change about your body with this technology? So yeah, I have an example. So I mean, it's still something that you will, that will be in contact with you, like, you know, like, uh, I don't know, like something in your show, yeah, something you wear. But uh, basically, like, uh, for example, one example we worked at Disney Research in Pittsburgh is called Revel. It's like a, a tactile technology and how it basically works is that it injects a signal into your body and uh, it generates an electrostatic field around your skin. And a little bit like a, a rubber balloon that's attracted to your hair, right? We, we generate the same force between your finger and the environment. And by modulating this effect, we can actually uh, give the impression of virtual tactile textures everywhere. So we can basically control what you perceive and how you perceive it in the environment. So I remember I, I actually used a system, uh, I guess it was, I think it was in Asia, where they had set up a metal plate and you would rub your finger along it and you could feel like the edges of the, of the plate and you could feel different, different, uh, different I guess, uh, textures on the plate, but they weren't really there. It was all electronics. So is this, is this a higher resolution? What's the, what's the distinct difference about this versus the previous versions of this? Uh, so I'm not sure about uh, the technology actually you tried out. I believe it was electrostatic. It was electrostatic. So I think that uh, it's basically like in some, some sort of reverse effect, meaning that uh, usually people, uh, and in, in the case of this demo, instrument the environment, meaning this plate was attached to an electrostatic device. And now basically we instrument the body, which means that the environment becomes uh, programmable, so it's like kind of uh, uh, you know a shift in paradigm. Basically. So we're not, you're not actually have to change the surface. You don't have to charge the surface. Your body is char is changed. All right, that's very cool. Now, at what point are we going to be able to just like reach our hand out and feel something invisible in front of us? Is that possible? Um, I mean, uh, with the, t the exact technology I'm talking about, it is n it's not possible. You need like it's about texture, so you need to be in contact with the environment. But um, there is some technology out there and some work who actually try to use the same principle, like basically something that you wear and, you know, like uh, uh, inject signal into your body to control muscles, for example, or, or things like that. So you can imagine, you know, if you can control your muscles and uh, the contraction of your muscles, uh, you can basically, uh, you might be able to simulate things that are, you know, virtual and floating and, you know, uh, being able to uh, give the impression that you can grasp them or, or not grasp them, for example. Sounds amazing. So that's what you're working on now. You're going to work on no, something somebody else. Yeah, exactly. It's like a you know like it's like a, I think like a, a trend in research. So it's like you know it's community of people involved in this type of approach. I think, and uh, so we did a couple of projects in sensing, and uh, for example, Touche is like like a sensing technology that also when you wear it, you can basically like sense gestures uh, on your body, for example, or sense what you touch. So this is a work done by Ivan Popirev, uh, who's running the group I'm in in Disney Research. But um, yeah, and so there's like also like in, uh, you know, uh, uh, other labs in this small community, uh, for example, the, the work I described with muscle construction is a lab in uh, Tokyo, University of Tokyo. Now, why is Disney doing this? Why is Disney uh, Research doing this? So, I mean, Disney Research is, is a research lab, right? So it has like a... So not, they're not going to recreate Disney World in, in invisible space. No, so it's, it's, like a, uh, it's like a research lab, meaning that we have like a, a, a big foot in the academic world. So we, you know, we do like fundamental research, some part of research. There's like a, a research on various different fields. We publish papers and things like that. So some aspect of research might be applied. But uh, it's not. So you get a lot of you get a lot of cash from the mouse, but it's not it's not officially a Disney kind of thing. You don't have to wear ears or anything. Uh, well, <laughs> what can I say? <laughs> Only sometimes. All right, Olivier Val, thank you very much for spending a little time with us. 
Olivier Bao, OlivierBao.com, is that right? Yes. All right. Thanks a lot for watching.